Hi, fourth grade. Today's question is, where do artists get their ideas? Right now, we are creating a project for the MLK contest. This is optional for you. I can't force you to enter. But these are some images of contest entries that won last year. So take a look. You could win a prize this year. Great. So sorry if I sound a little bit odd. It's because I'm dealing with allergies. So please bear with me in this video because my voice ain't doing so hot. You should have a ruler a pencil. I will pass out a piece of paper in a moment and we'll start building our cities for the MLK project. But before we do that, I wanted you guys just to take a moment and look at some other artwork. This might inspire you. Maybe being together means being with your family in a living room. So maybe that's your idea. And then I have some that are more related to this project. This is an elementary example, except it doesn't have any color. Here's another one. And then here's like a high school slash college level one. But what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to get one at random and I want you to actually take the ruler and see if they all go to the vanishing point. Sometimes they do and then sometimes like these windows, they're heading the wrong way. Those windows should be the other direction. Even windows need to follow the vanishing point and some of these windows do not. Even though the one point perspective is phenomenal on this one, take a look at how big these doors are. If you were to walk into that door, you wouldn't have any space inside of the building. So what I want you to do is just kind of critique it. You might have a different one than your neighbor. Take the ruler and actually kind of check their work for me. You might find that some of their perspective is a little bit off but go ahead, start measuring out the windows, the road, check their work. See if it all goes back to the finishing point. You're welcome to keep these on the table. If there's one that you wanna look at for your project, just to get ideas, I say go for it. You can leave it on the table. Otherwise, we'll just put these on the back counter in a moment. I'm gonna go over your project, go over expectations, and show you where you can find help if you need it. If you could please go to fourth grade art studio and give me a thumbs up. Under classwork, you're going to see your art portfolio. We are going to use that at the end of today. I have MLK contest, one point perspective. If you could click and open the one, two, three for today and then give me a thumbs up so I know you're ready. All right, we talked about reflections. Now here is where you can find help. So see this little help me button? You can click the red text and it will go over instructions, which I'm about to give you. I'm gonna show you how I do mine, you can do yours. The reason I do this is because usually the question is, how do I do this? Like you've forgotten, or maybe you weren't here. Like I said, I'm gonna go over it, but it doesn't make sense for me to spend five minutes showing you how to do one point perspective when you can just open a video and then have me playing. It was completely silent. You can play it, pause it, whatever you need, and it shows you how to do a basic street view. It's sped up, but you can either copy me or just watch it and get inspiration. But it goes over everything. The vanishing point, boxes. Your boxes are gonna end up becoming buildings. I give you ideas if you wanna do a neighborhood. What's the background gonna be? Is there gonna be Dallas? It gives you kind of a zoom in look at the different details I added. This one does not include color. We'll add color another day. Don't worry about color. You can find all sorts of different videos on YouTube on how to do one point perspective. Like this one is how to do a sit, uh, this one was how to do a kitchen. Now, if you wanna do a room or a hallway, fine. I'm sure you can figure it out. Some of you were asking, how can you do a top-down city? So like, think if you were a bird. If you look down here, you'll see the yellow text. It says, feeling like an expert. This one is very hard. So that's why I call it expert level. But this is another video that I made in case you really wanted to push your skills and you wanted to do something looking down at a city. It's basically the same style, except now your boxes our skyscrapers and you're looking down on the city. Our paper, go ahead and close your Chromebook. You don't need it for now. You can either put it away from you or under you. If you could please, go ahead and decide whether you want it vertical or horizontal. 
If you want a wide city, like a street, you might want to do it horizontal. If you have very tall buildings planned, maybe it's downtown Plano, go ahead and do vertical. Once you've decided, give me a thumbs up. All right, bottom left-hand corner, let's go ahead and write our name. My name is Mr. Bookfield. Just go ahead and write your name. You want to leave yourself plenty of room for your city. We're also going to write our class code. I will pause the video and give you your class code now. All right, a couple of these steps we're going to do together. You're going to take your ruler, decide where you want your horizon. Your horizon goes from left to right. It's not up and down, and it's basically where the sky meets the land. To make it easier for yourself, you probably just want to do a flat line. Draw a light till you get it right. So like if you hate something, you can still erase it. But if you draw hard, you'll have to start over. Go ahead and draw your horizon wherever you want it to be. I did mine a little bit lower so I have more room for buildings. Okay, so now we need to do the vanishing point. The vanishing point is always right in the middle. If you put it anywhere else, it's gonna be too confusing unless you're just expert level. Give us a thumbs up when you're ready. All right. Now, if you have your own idea, if you're gonna do a room, you could draw a box and do your perspective that way. I'm going to show you my way of doing it. But like I said, if you have your very own idea and you know how to do this, just go ahead and quietly get started. Remember, everything goes to the vanishing point. So you're gonna first, I'm gonna first decide how big I want my street. I want my street about this big. I'm gonna put a little dot, dot just to kind of mark it. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect the vanishing point to the sides of the paper. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and create my first building. I'm going to start with a box. So I kind of want a neighborhood this time, maybe a neighborhood full of houses. I'm going to do the bottom. This is end up going to be the side of the house. I want it this tall. And then I kind of want a triangular roof. So I'm going to put a triangle. And notice my box goes off the page. That's okay, you can do that. All right, now I'm gonna think about what points would I see? What points would I not see? I don't think I would see that, or I don't think I would see the horizon through the house unless it was invisible or a glass house. Using the ruler, you're gonna connect the corners that you think would match up to the vanishing point and draw them. Now I'm going to echo the roof of the house and echo the side of the house. I just make it the same parallel. Even windows and doors will always add up to the vanishing point. So first I make vertical lines and then I always connect it back to the vanishing point. You can use this for, like I said, doors, windows. Now, if the window is just facing towards you like this one, you don't have to connect it. Details, details, details. One thing that oftentimes happens when you're doing one point perspective is it kind of looks like a desert wasteland. Like it looks a little bit cold, not so much real. You can change that by overlapping things. So like I'm gonna put some trees behind this house. Don't forget about little details. Is there gonna be sidewalks? Even the sidewalks match up to the vanishing point. I always say every year, when in doubt, just find the vanishing point and connect it. Chances are that's gonna solve your problem. If it doesn't solve your problem, watch one of my videos. I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Are there people dancing in the street? Is there cars waving at each other? If you wanna include a car, yes, even a car is one point perspective. I'm gonna draw the bumper of the car, some vanishing points, And I'm gonna do another one over here. Think about what's in your sky. I think I wanna do a quote on this one. So I think I'm gonna have like an airplane or something and maybe some text in the sky. I want a special font for what I'm gonna put in the sky. So I'm gonna to go to defont.com. Now I know this is fancy cursive, but it says together is better. You can make decisions like this. If you wanna put text somewhere in your picture, fine. Of course, I want you to go over your lines with Sharpie. One of the reasons is that you might have access to paint for this project. So if you want to go over with this with watercolor before you turn it in, that's an option too. We have fine Sharpies. These are a little itty bitty. Protect these, be nice to these. 
That's all I have. And then we have some of the just normal Sharpies. When you're working with Sharpie, you might decide that you want to add more detail. Just because you didn't have a pencil in there doesn't mean you need to go back and add more pencil. You can go ahead and add those details if you feel like it needs it when you add the Sharpie. And yes, I do want you to go over any lines that need to be kept because we are going to take an eraser at the very end and erase any lines we don't need. Here's a teachable moment. I messed up with the Sharpie. Do you see how my lines don't match up anymore? Just see if you can cover it up. I wonder if there's a way that I can make this just a little bit thicker and just kind of hide that mistake. Mistakes are okay. Once you feel like you've got all the lines that you want to keep, erase any extra junk that you don't need, those stray pencil lines. This should only take a few seconds because you have this big eraser. While you're erasing, you may find some spots like this that you need to go over. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Remember, there's videos on our one, two, three to help you if you are super confused or you don't know what you're doing. Don't worry about color today. We're going to have all of our options next time. Have fun.